All right, folks, I wanted to start off this video talking about the Navionics Platinum Relief Shading. And I'm on my buddy's Brian boat. Um, it's been a while since I've used our Hummingbird, but hopefully within the next couple weeks we'll get it. But as you can see here on the, the Lowrance, you can really see defined ledges. You, you can see these strips. And these strips were very important. It's one thing that I've learned when I've been going offshore here recently and even fishing inside the bay, uh, looking at different inside the channel itself. You can find these ledges that look like this and uh, it's really become a really big tool for me when I'm going offshore. Yes, uh, in this episode, you're gonna see I'm gonna take one of our sponsors out, Mike Boyle from Levin Law Group. And I only went to one set of numbers, and from that point on, I went and just scouted. And every spot that we hit, we caught fish on. So it just, it, it proved to me that there's a lot more to this Platinum, uh, Nav Navionics Platinum Relief Shading than what I was putting into it. So I took a little bit of time to talk about what I was looking at. But as you can see here, you can see these stripes out we're way off we're at about 90 feet of water in in this aspect and you can see the different ledges all around so this is a great tool to be able to go out and find new ledges and this is shown all over the place i thought it was more 60 60 feet of water and more but actually it's all the way up into the bay into the main channel so you can find ledges just like this so what I want to do is, well, let's go ahead and get into the fishing portion of this video. We'll talk more about the Navionics Platinum and what it looks like on the machine. So let's get to fishing. It's kind of fighting like one. Yeah, we got a grunt. Grunt? Yeah. If you want to keep them. You can put them in that box right there. Okay. All right, folks. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of explanation. We're offshore today. I've got my, my good friend Mike with um, Levin Law Group, and uh, he's never caught a hogfish. So I told him I would take him out and try to get him on a hogfish. And one thing that we've done is on the Navi Navionics relief shading, when you get out to about 65 70 feet you start seeing these strips along and I'll show you right now what it looks like but you start seeing these strips and then you start seeing these ledges there's a red grouper and hard bottom along these these spots so um, what I do is I go along these strips and I start looking and sure enough, we pick up some, some spots like that, but um, we had to come out to about 80 feet of water to see what we could get going out here. Nice little red grouper. So hopefully we can get Mike on his hogfish. Okay, folks, this is what I was talking about when I said the strips. You can see these strips, whoops right here you can this is what I'm talking about these strips right here they're running in strips and then you have one that runs this way I'm checking out so we're fishing here we've got a ledge right here we've probably got another ledge right there we've got a ledge over there you can see that ledge right there we got to go check that out. I don't even have that marked but as you can see we've got fish up above so if you have the Navionics relief shading, it even comes in really handy inshore inside the bay also, especially if you're looking for ledges in that inside the channel itself. So if you do go offshore and you have the Navionics relief shading, check out these strips because more times than not, these strips are there for a reason and it's indicating hard bottom and ledges. So definitely check that out. If you, if you don't have the Navionics relief shading, I highly recommend getting it. Probably another red grouper. We're in the land of red grouper, just not big ones. Yep, this one might keep though. Oh no, it's a gag. And he just spit up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chummers. 
<laughs> hmm. Got him a red grouper. Got me a dog. It's a decent sized guy. Yeah, not bad. But that fish, I've been chumming here, and that fish spit up like nine pieces of bait. A lot of people ask me, especially when I'm fishing the bay, how often do I chum? Out here, chumming's a little bit different because the tide's not ripping. I mean, the tide moves out here, but not like it does inside the bay. So when I'm inside the bay, I what I like to do is I like to chum when the tide is slack or near slack. Because if you start to chum and the tide's running, that chum just goes whoosh and it's gone. At least with this, we're you know I can chum and get the fish off the bottom. Uh oh, uh, that might be a keeper red right there. Uh, glad I got the right equipment for yeah, you, right? Whoo, that was a smack. Oh yeah, that's gonna keep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. it's a gag. Man. <laughs> Ooh, that would keep. Yeah, he would keep. He's spitting up something. It's a nice fish. Yep, not bad. Hold him this way. There you go. Beautiful. Nice fish. Nice job. Give me Mike. quite a little workout. Well, a little bigger. A little bigger? Yeah. Yeah. Not a bad little red. No. A red twenty two. Twenty. Twenty? Yeah. Uh oh. You got your hands full there. Yeah, I do. <sighs> Every crank. I get him off the bottom. This guy just spit up about 15 Did he really? Yeah. He must be running out of chum and having the hooks. Yeah. This is going to be a keeper, I think. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's a beautiful fish. Yep. Beautiful sight. Not a bad red grouper. About 19. Really close. I don't think you need to measure that one. Oh, he's yeah. 21. I think mine's 19. Can you measure him? Yeah, I don't think he's going to make it. Nope. 18. They're on it quick. This thing's shaking its head like crazy. It's not happy. Oh. Another porgy. <laughs> That's a bigger one. Yeah. I might need to keep this guy. That's a big Light one. Lightweight or shrimp? Shrimp. Folks, all we're doing is he's using, Mike is using a one ounce candy apple red regular jig, and I'm using a one and a quarter huggy candy apple pink jig doesn't seem to matter what the jig is just as long as you can feel it when it gets to the bottom you're on that's how fast that the bite is and like i stated before and i showed you earlier in the episode that navionics platinum with the relief shading we just keep bouncing from i'm not even going to our regular numbers i'm just bouncing around trying to find some new stuff 
And sure enough, we have, oh, son of a biscuit. So uh, if you don't have that Navionics Platinum, I would highly recommend it with the relief shading. Yep. Good that's Lord. not a bad one. Nice. Beautiful fish. Yep. There you go. It's definitely gonna keep. What's their main characteristic? Is they'll Sometimes they come up with like a five gallon bucket. Sometimes they'll dig like that one was digging. So it just, it all depends. Well, as most of you probably have figured out by now, and or if you've seen the episode with him and, and me before, Mike is, is a lawyer at Levin Wall. And um, I was asking him, he's worked for the state attorney's office before. So we were talking and I asked him, I said, oh, before I get rudely interrupted, <laughs> um, I was asking him, you know, he, he used to, used to, you were the defense? I've done both. You've I, done I, both. I've used, I started out as a prosecutor putting people in jail and then I worked as a criminal defense attorney for many years on the other side of the law. So I've kind of seen criminal law from both sides. So what was the most rewarding? <laughs> it depends on the day, man. Both, both were, both were tough at times and both were very rewarding at times. But it's, uh, it's, I mean, you're really dealing with the same fact patterns. It's just the, which side of it you're on. But uh, now, you know, I don't really do it. I don't do much of that anymore. Most of what I'm doing now is car accident and slip and falls and injury cases, which I find, I find to be very rewarding. Helping people who've been hurt and don't know how to navigate. How to navigate. Yeah, it, I mean, insurance companies and all that. I mean, there's a lot swirling around when you get hurt in a car accident or, you know, get hurt through no fault here for some other reason and you got to figure out how to deal with it and with with mike explaining that is most of you probably know and remember that chad got into an accident and he hurt his hand and he ended his whole hand his whole hand modeling career yeah, for his whole hand modeling career <laughs> and uh so he he called mike and mike was a, able to help him kind of navigate and Kind of say you know what to look out for and in, in, in dealing with the insurance companies and uh chad was able to settle and, and take care of himself but uh you know it's nice having somebody because like mike and the levin law group with on our side it's funny because when they first approached me i was like you know guys i'm sorry but i don't think this makes sense but then um then i i looked at their website and then i talked to him again and talked to him again and then I came over and sat down with them and sure enough, you know, they, they, they have represented, you know, people that have gotten, uh, wrongly, con are wrongly, uh, charged with, oh, look at that, a trigger fish, <laughs> bigger than what wow. we caught offshore. That's a big one. Yeah. But wrongly convicted of BUI and they got them off and, and some other, other deals that they were dealing with. And so they, and Mike is an avid fisherman. So I thought, you know, with the ever changing laws, with the way everything's going these days, with them closing, opening, closing, opening, nice trigger fish. I felt that it was, it was a right partnership. And after I got to talk to Mike and his partner, really nice guys, just down to earth. And Mike and I have had a bunch of laughs today. It's been a blast and we're still catching fish i told him i said well let's stop by this one spot coming in and see what we can do and we're catching fish but now he's going to take off that pin fish because nothing was biting <laughs> nothing it biting. and put on something else if you want to try cut bait there you go want me to keep the pin fish or toss it and speaking of cut bait our chum cutter our bucket chum cutter and our regular chum cutter will save you a ton of time cutting bait trust me I love this thing. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't sell it. It absolutely works perfect. 
we've sold a ton of them and everybody loves them so if you get a chance check that out on our website I don't think I've ever caught more different species of fish in one day. species of fish. <laughs> I think we counted 10. And that's the neat thing about going offshore is because you never really know what you're going to hook or what you're going to catch. That's the cool thing about it. And I think that's why Chad likes going offshore so much is because you just never know. I mean, we've, get, we've got such a mixed bag in the cooler, which I'll show you here in a minute, that, you know, can you do that inshore here? Not really, no. But you can still catch a lot of the same fish inshore inside tampa bay um, that you can offshore just i mean literally that trigger fish i'm looking at agma right now i'm looking at fort Desoto right now so i every time we come to this spot we catch trigger fish which is the weirdest thing in the world but it happens and what i did folks is the tide is starting to is really slow in here so what i did is i dropped down to our three eighths huggy and in the hot pink and i can get it to the bottom still feel the bottom i was using a heavier i was using the the one eighth but uh or the one and a quarter i'm sorry the one and a quarter but the problem was i think it was just too heavy and they weren't liking it for some reason as soon as these tides slack off these fish like the lighter weights come on mike <laughs> but like i always say folks is when when that tide's running slow you want to lighten it up as much as possible we always get that question well what size do you like well it all depends on the circumstances so if you're going to be buying jigs from us buy every kind that we have no i'm just kidding but in all seriousness you want to be able to have the lightweight stuff and then you want to have the heavy stuff uh-oh mic's on i can't believe i haven't gotten bit it's a good fish mike looks like it. What you got? Oh, side hook grunt. <laughs> no wonder why I put up such a good fight. <laughs> it was funny because Mike was just talking about how the, the fish are down there pecking the, the cut bait. And I was explaining to him is that's actually you're going to go through a lot of cut bait and um, to be able to get those fish riled up because what they're doing is they're down there and they're eating the cut bait and they're create creating a ruckus down there. So all the other bigger fish are going to come in and try to see you know what what's going on over here. There's something going on that I need to know about. And that's exactly what happens is a lot of times we have to go through losing bait and catching grunts and stuff like that until those bigger fish move in and just like that he stole my he st i had two pieces of bait on there and he stole it that fast but what it's doing is it's creating a chum slick down there and it's getting them riled up so the the, the more patient you are especially if you're getting bit like that the better off you are it's the biggest mango snapper we've caught all day yes sir <laughs> Who needs to run offshore? I'm telling you folks, you don't need to run offshore. Matter of fact, a buddy of mine, Captain Shannon Wise, who you've seen on the, William Wise, whatever his name is, as you've seen on the show, he caught a 36 inch grouper the other day, in, way inside Tampa Bay. So the fish are always there. You just gotta take the time and find your spots. That's why I always say folks, have as many different baits on the boat as possible. Because if you don't, you're going to have that situation where you run into that they'll be eating a certain bait and you don't have it. Well, Mike, we didn't get you your hogfish. We got a hogfish. We got a hogfish, <laughs> but we didn't get you a hogfish. We didn't get you to catch one. There's always next time. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. So I just want to say thanks to everybody for watching. We Again, I can't say it enough how much we appreciate the support. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, if you guys are looking for a lawyer, they cover all kinds. Of, you do car accidents, car personal, accidents injury. personal injury, but but you also do, your, your firm also does a lot of different things. Yeah, I mean, if you've got a question, give me a call. I'll either know the answer or somebody in my firm will, or you know, I've been practicing in this area for 20 years, so I'll know who will. And I'll leave his contact information. He's actually talked to a couple of people uh, that I know personally, and, and I appreciate that. And if you guys are looking for somebody, for a lawyer, uh, hopefully you're not. Hopefully everything's okay, but if you are, 
these are the guys that go to Levin Law Group. Mike, I, I, it was a blast, man. Enjoyed Always a it. pleasure, yeah. And it was a lot of fun. We got to make this, uh, as soon as we get our own boat, we'll definitely make it more common and, and uh, get you out there some more. But again, thank you very much for watching. Fish more, catch more, and we'll see you on the flip side.